Hello, so today we're going to talk about possibly the simplest type of oscillator you could possibly make out of electrical components. I touched on this circuit last week on Red Bull's website to make a really simple hot glue gun light theremin. If you want to make this, it's really simple. There's only actually three electrical components and all you need to do is just glue it all together. The link is here. But yeah, I wanted to touch on this circuit more because I think it might be the simplest oscillator you could possibly make. Because all it has got is one light dependent resistor, a transistor and a capacitor. That's all it is and it's oscillating. It's crazy, right? The only downside is it requires about 12 to 18 volts to run. Hence, in the Red Bull video, I put two 9 volt batteries in series to make 18 volts, which gave it plenty of power to make it oscillate. The thing about this circuit that makes it so simple is the fact that you're using a transistor not in a traditional sense. You're actually using it in a mode called negative avalanche. More information on that in the description. But this mode actually doesn't use the central pin. You're only using two pins from the transistor and it's making it just completely jump out and go crazy and make a really nice sawtooth wave. Okay, so apart from making a light theremin, I thought it would be interesting if we could just breadboard out the circuit to make a really simple oscillator with a pitch knob. Simple, right? The problem with making it work to put a jack in is you need a couple more components to make it run. And it actually adds up to six components, which I think is still simpler than something like a 555 oscillator. And it sounds softer and nicer, and it sounds in a way more analog and less harsh because it's actually a sawtooth wave instead of a square wave. I think it sounds really nice, but you'll hear that soon. So this, lo and behold, is the circuit. Simple, right? It looks really easy. And here's the list of components. Lovely. You could probably get all of that stuff for well under a pound. So we're gonna build this on something called strip board, which is actually a board that has got strips of copper in and loads of lines. It means that you can make any circuit on it and just kind of make it up as you go. The great thing is you don't need a whole board as well. You just get your pliers and you snip out a thing like this, which is actually a 12 hole by 16 hole piece of strip board. Easy, right? So I'm gonna go over to the workbench and I'm gonna solder together this circuit onto this piece of strip board. This oscillator doesn't have any CV or anything, but it won't be difficult to add and that might come later in another video. But for now, we're just gonna get it like going woo woo. So first things first, is I'm actually going to sharpie the dots where the outputs go. So this is gonna be the ground, that's gonna be the voltage. So first thing first, let's start with the resistors because of the smallest bit, 1K, and then the 100K goes So there we go, that is the actual circuit finished. It was that simple. So the difference between this circuit and this circuit is not much at all. So the difference is the potentiometer is there instead of a light dependent resistor. There is a 1K resistor to stop the LED from burning out, which the LED is kind of acting as the load that the speaker is acting. So it makes the actual transistor oscillate. And then the other 100K is merely there to stop it from mixing with other oscillators when you put loads of these together. But before we put loads of these together, let's see if it actually works. So I've just soldered a wire onto it to get the power into it. So you've got lots of options to power these. It needs at least 12 volts to oscillate, so you could technically wire it into a modular synth power supply if you really wanted to. Just plug the ground into ground and the plus 12 volts to the 12 volts. But the problem with 12 volts is you don't actually get that much range on the oscillator. So what you could do is you could do the batteries, nine volt, nine volt, and then that becomes 18 volts, and you plug that in. Or you could just get a 15 volt or 18 volt like plug power supply, and you wire that up to it. 
I mean, you've got loads of options, but right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this, which is just a variable power supply that I picked up at a junk shop. Woo! So I've just found a problem with it. It won't actually work unless you cut the center leg off the transistor, because if you solder that center leg into the actual strip board, then it makes too much surface area and it just kind of acts as like a, a really weird little ground and it won't actually oscillate. So you need to snip that middle leg off. Don't solder it into the strip board. So let's turn this up. So you can literally build these in like five or 10 minutes each. So what if we put together a couple more and popped them in a box and then let them all mangle together and just be little drones. Well, let's try it, shall we? So in around 20 minutes, I've got them all soldered together. Look at that, that's five oscillators in my hand. So we just need to put these in a box, solder the jacks together, and yeah, should be done. So here it is, five really simple oscillators in a very oversized box. It's oversized because I'm going to put a sequencer in it soon. So subscribe because that will be coming very soon as well. But right now, you can see they're all flashing around the back of the knobs. And yeah, let's just play with it. These two actually have higher capacitor values. But they're not quite right yet. I need to work that out. But, you know. Add a bit of reverb and they get a little angrier. Yeah, like there's endless fun, like trying to find like little patterns and you know, nice harmonies within these, even just these five oscillators. So this method is really good because you could just keep on adding oscillators. So the next video I'm gonna do on oscillators 
It's just the question, how many is too many? I don't know. So that video will come in a couple of weeks and I'm going to give it a good go to try and answer how many oscillators is too many oscillators. So please subscribe and then you can see when it comes up and stuff. But yeah, peace and build one. Build one.